Hey everybody, it's BC here, and welcome to another episode of Space Engineers. And yes, I have been busy. Very busy, in fact. Let me get out of here so you can see a little bit better. I have 12 refineries set up. Well, 12 more refineries set up. Because I have been processing a lot of material. Uh, what's the wrong button? Of course, it's the wrong button. Uh, just give you a little idea of the numbers here. That's uh, my little AFK camera there. I'm going to sit in the crowd pod for a few hours while I wait for this stuff to process. Uh, that's kind of why I'm a little behind on this one. But as you can see, we got 1,200 tons of cobalt. We have 15,000 tons of iron and uh, 700 and some odd tons of nickel. And believe it or not, other than the cobalt, that's about half of what I need. Because today, I actually want to build a new elevator rail. Now... This is one of those projects where there's been a lot of hurdles that we had to get over. And uh, now that I'm thinking about it, I see the rocks sticking out there. Uh, we'll actually get to this in a second. I already made my safe. Uh, yeah, I got a projector block out there. I've been messing around with the projector, trying to figure in a few things out. And I did figure out one thing, is that's how to break my game. Uh, let's get that back on. Uh, speaking of which, before I forget, too, I was... Uh, I was out getting some cobalt over at the cobalt mine, uh, asteroid, wherever it is, out there somewhere. I don't know, but uh, I was mining, and ne next thing I know, I started seeing sparks, and I start, started realizing that they weren't sparks from the drills. They were sparks from the, dr the pirate drone that was like 100 meters behind me shooting at me. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Hang on. Well, I might as well continue while I'm in here. But yeah, anyways, uh, I tried to get out of there and backed out by the time I got away half the ship was gone like all the thrusters on the one side and two drills are completely torn off i was smoking the cargo but the cargo had to be uh, repaired and so fortunately i loaded up a save went back did an even quicker mining run got about 2,000 tons of ore but yeah two more drones were there and so i'm gonna have to do some some something i don't know offensive or defensive measures for instance uh, with these guys uh, uh question i do have though is if i start going after the pirates do they start spawning more and more closer do they get more hostile towards me or are they just sitting ducks in free game and i see that as he's coming closer but anyways uh back to breaking the game yes uh now i believe it has to do with the fact that one i'm a attached to an asteroid, technically built into it. Uh, that one we'll get to in a second here. Um, and I have a piston on here. Now what's going to happen, don't ask about the color, I was just messing around, uh, we'll get to that assembler in a second. What happens basically is I can build on the grid no problem, but as soon as I remove a block and like this block here and split the grid, it hasn't failed yet, but it should technically float, float away. And it didn't do it this time. Why? That's strange. Let's try it again. Come on, you know you want to do it. Oh, sure. Now it doesn't want to do it. But anyways, you probably saw that game-breaking clip I uploaded. Basically, I was just taking off a block and the whole, I guess, the vibration for the piston caused the rock to actually break and it took off. Is he actually coming coming closer to me? Yeah, it's hard to say. Anyways, uh, yeah, so I ha like I said, I have been busy uh, processing ores and all that stuff and getting stuff ready. Uh, oh, yeah. But, uh, well, let's not kill myself. Uh, I've also started, sorry, sorry about that, that's what happens when you don't record for a few days, you trip over your own tongue. Uh, one of the things I did do is I did get the, the DLC package, so I've got all the extra blocks and all that stuff. This I actually do like, so I'm going to go ahead and place this down, uh, let's actually choose a better color, that's better. This is actually a really cool block and I like it, and I can think of some interesting things I can do with this. So what you do is you go to the console block, you just open up a blueprint. And I have blueprinted the station here, so copy that to the clipboard, and there we go. 
we get a hol get a holographic rejection of it. The only issue with this though is it only does single grid. You try to load anything up that's multiple grids, it just loads up the largest grid. Now here's the thing, you can customize it, of course. Like scale, for instance. There we go, we have a life <laughs> life size scale station of the station or in the station. And we can blueprint it just I don't think we can blueprint it, but it's just doing the blueprint hologram. Uh, rotate, pitch, yeah, all, all that stuff. Usual. So that is pretty cool. And then there's the other blocks too, and that's just for decorative purposes or uh, like even the, the weapon storage locker is something I'd probably end up using. Just always having the backup set of tools just in case, you know. Well, not in case, but when the inevitable happens. But one other thing I did do, and this is something that w wasn't the easiest thing in the world. Um, I was going to put a control panel here, and I never did. I don't know why the projector doesn't actually have a control panel on it. I think it, I think it would. Uh, anyways, I'll go ahead and do this. We'll go to the projector. i got to start hiding some of these things. They're getting so out of hand. So what I have done is I have taken the 44-kilometer pillars, and I have edited them. Now it's going to take a, take a little... Oh yeah, because I had the piston on there and the merge block, but it's going to take a second to load here. But I went into the, the actual blueprint file and I changed it from light armor blocks to heavy armor blocks. I have also doubled up the, the rail so it's two blocks wide. And I also went through and got rid of all the, the build integrity states that were 100%. So now we have fully complete. There it is. I'm actually bringing it a little bit closer so we can see it. Uh, it is big and it does actually work. I have tested it and it is good to go. 66,000 blocks now. Yeah, it should be all heavy armor blocks. I don't know why it's saying that, but let's bring that in a little bit so we can see it. So there we go. Two blocks wide. I, I didn't go all the way, but yeah, two blocks wide, all the way up to the top, 44 kilometers. And it is in a buildable state, so I can actually go ahead and just start building right off of it. It will not work on here. Uh, that was one of the things I was testing as far as the, the build that I wanted to do, because originally I wanted a projector to place a block on a grid. It will actually build onto a connected grid as long as it's on the same grid. So if I use a projector and project a block over there and fill it in, it'll actually connect to that grid. But if it's on a piston or a rotor, it will not actually connect because it's a separate grid. So that's a bit of a drawback, so that's why I had to do this. And yeah, believe it or not, it didn't take me that long. It took me 15 minutes. The power of notepad. But anyways, what I want to do is I'm actually going to go and find a place to get this set up. Uh, with the projector and actually being able to set this up the way I want, I'm actually going to be able to pick an asteroid that's fairly close to the base over there. So if I'm over there, maybe something over there maybe, maybe even that one. And I sh should be able to get closer, hopefully not through the, the nice glass roof that I built. And I'm going to keep them the same color because I couldn't figure out the color values in the, in the SBC file. But anyways, uh, I will be ready. So I was thinking about it. I think I might actually just have it into this asteroid. Uh, just f for one, because I want the station to actually, the elevator to come to this station. And two, that way it's closer when I have to fill this thing up. Uh, I will get into how I plan on doing this in a moment. Uh, there is a few other hurdles I need, need to explain. Uh, that should be a light armor block, if not. Yes, it is. So now I'm going to do what I did last time. I'm going to try to rotate this into a, a good enough orientation towards the center of the planet. Should be right about there. I hope this is the right way. Oh, damn. Oh, sometimes this gets a little confusing. I want to, I want to rotate. There we go. That's what I want. Let's have it like that. All right, so now let me just find a nice place for it because it's going to be was it eleven blocks wide? Let's actually start on this side. 
Oh, go over here, because i got to put a reactor on here anyways. going to put a large reactor, even though I don't need a large reactor, just to make sure it's always got power, because I want to keep the proje projection going. So it's 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And, yeah, I can put the reactor in the middle, which I do have on that bar. That's <laughs> unfortunately not the right hotkey. All right, so I'll just put that right in the middle there. I'll fill her up. I probably have to get some uranium. And I need more computers. Okay, I'm back. I was having uh, I'm having some issues with my storage system here. It's uh, not working out too well. Uh, it's not outputting from the assemblers properly. I don't know why. All right, I gotta put a few more blocks here. That's right. It's gonna be 11 wide. It's a nine block gap. So we'll do that as long as we got two on this side. So now. Uh, we'll throw a projector on there, which I have here. We'll do that. Fill you in. Okay, and give you some power. I thought I covered up the only conveyor port. Uh, actually, you know what? Give it a little bit of juice. Okay, now, control panel. Let's actually get somewhere where I actually see where I'm placing this thing. All right. Fortunately, there's only two things here, so I can actually see. All right, and now I'll go to New Rails, copy that to clipboard, and give it a second. And there it is. All right, where is it? It's got to be rotated, does it? <laughs> yeah, it's going the wrong way. All right, so that is going to be, I have no idea. Let's find it. Go to here, projector, and... Pitch. Yeah, it's going to be one of these. No, it's not yeah, it's roll. There we go. So that goes down. Uh, it's not the way I want it lined up. Let's try it again. I was actually thinking you would be able to do uh, like increments, but that's not the case because it's uh, stuck to a grid. All right, horizontal stays, vertical. Let's bring that up and forward offset. Should be there. It's almost like I knew what I was doing. And that's good, and then you can act, I can actually see how this works. So now these blocks here I should be able to build. So as you can see, heavy armor block, heavy armor block. It used to be light armor blocks. So now what I gotta do before I start building anything is I actually have to give something or I have to build something to build onto. So I'm gonna fill in a few of these by hand. Yes, I gotta do the hard work here. And I'll bring you back when it's time to start building the machine. So there we have it. I got about 20 or so blocks built. Uh, that's just my uh, starting top area for the machine I'm going to build. Uh, yeah, it's a bit of an overlap here. I might fill it in or whatever, but it is technically connected to the grid. I'm hoping that this stays connected to the grid. Uh, I'll probably... It's actually... Uh, let's re-anchor. Let's get some proper blocks here. We'll just stick a couple underneath if we can. No, it's not going to let me go underneath. Or is it? No, it's not. But I can do it this way. Just for, uh, you know, peace of mind, if I can get under there. So now, the th next, there's a couple of issues with this build. One is the sheer amount of resources that it's going to take to build all this. So, if we look at the actual cost of things, for instance, like the metal grid, this is one that's interesting. So it's 1.2 iron, 0.5 nickel, and 0.3 cobalt. So it's 2 kilos in resources. If you look at the weight of it, it's 6 kilos. So it's 3 times as heavy as what it takes to make it. Same with the iron plates. The iron plates are 20 kilos apiece. But they only take 2.1 kilos. So, instead of trying to bring all the materials with you to build it, 
why not build it on the go? So that's why I have all this iron and cobalt and nickel, so I can actually produce the plates and the grids as I go. Um, I have done calculations on how long this is going to take. Uh, I plan on doing one line or one row of blocks every six seconds. I don't want to go too fast. I've had issues with the timer blocks when I'm, you're not using full seconds. Uh, when I was on on Mars, wherever it is, I was doing the bipedal walker. I had I was trying to go like half second on the timers and. Sometimes it'd be like a half second, sometimes it'd be a second and a half, so it's almost like it was carrying over. So I'm just going to go with the one second, that's fine. Uh, it's going to take about 28 hours for this to finish, uh, which gives me plenty of time to get up the rest of the resources. So now, now let's start this thing. So I'm going to build it right on the grid, and it's going to be basically piston driven. Uh oh, climbing alert. Yeah. I have yet to see that so-called clang other than the station breaking apart, but that's besides the point. That was my own fault. So I want to start with get some gears on here, landing gear on here, and uh, make sure I got enough room for this because it's going to be pretty big. Now the landing gear was two, so we'll go like this, like that, and uh, I haven't really thought of the color of it. Uh, I think red might be the best idea for this. Uh, I always do shift P. I don't know why. I'll get a nice bright red. You know why? Because red is faster. Go and place that there. I fill this in. Now I'm going to do a quick save before I break this free in case something goes wrong. All right, let's see what happens. We're good to go. That's what I like is uh, landing gear auto, auto lock even if you don't have power. So now I can use this to build off. Now it's going to be. Uh, there's going to be pistons on the legs, and, oh yeah, i got to have the pistons the other way, just be, so they'll snap properly. And eh, where is it? Three. Uh, just like, just like so, and I will have to start labeling these. And there's going to be, believe it or not, to keep up with production, I'm going to need 14 assemblers. All with uh, speed upgrades so yes there will be a reactor on this thing now I'm trying to think about how I want to get the assemblers I'm thinking about having them in line like this uh, I'm not too sure how fast they can transfer through the conveyor ports through each other so I'm gonna be having conveyor sort or conveyor connectors yes conveyor connectors so I'm probably just gonna end up building this whole thing out of conveyor connectors I do have to get tavern blocks on here but that is fine, so uh, let me get something worked out here and I'll bring you back. Okay, so here's the back end here. Uh, I had to put this piston facing the other way just because, um, you know, I can't, can't place it with the head up and I can't place the gear down and place that up there because it won't actually connect to the grid because this all has to be the same grid. Uh, yeah, so this is going to be this. Uh, oh yeah, I can put that out the front here. So now I gotta get the assemblers on here. Or actually, what I gotta do is pair these up because these are gonna be moving in synchronous order, fashion, whatever. Uh, block. Let's actually do these uh, piston rear one and piston rear two. Okay, so I also gotta get some power on here too. So I gotta extend these. Uh, we, I will group these to the rear because that's going to be for tiny. Um, I should put the reactor. Actually, put the reactor right in the back here would be perfect. No, oh, did I take it on top bar? Oh, yes, I did. For the passenger seat. So I got to place a charge on here. Haha. -ha. All right. Okay, like so, and give it some juice. So, now, I don't want the legs to move up too high. So what I'm going to do, um, maximum distance, not 10 meters. Uh, let's see how half a meter is. Uh, I'm going to change that speed down. i got to adjust timing, too, to make sure that it stays within a stays within a second. No, oh, what am I doing here? Uh, uh, 
got something going on here. Is it not going to work? Oh. oh, okay. There we go. Is that actually doing something? Hang on. Yeah, I figured it out. It was because uh, the other gear was locked too. It was getting confused. Uh, this isn't going to be an issue because uh, I will be unlocking the gears before I move the piston. So there should be no issues. Should. I have yet to break the game. In a bad way, anyways. Oh, I got to charge up. Okay, uh, I figured out what's going on. It's the auto lock. Uh, the auto lock is actually engaging right about here. So I'll have to man manually lock and unlock them, which is fine because I am going to be using a bit of a fail safe on this. All right, so that is extended. Uh, we will leave them both like that. We will pair them up again to rear. Make sure they're actually paired up. And then the, the landing gear, I'm going to have to pair up as well. Uh, rename those to gear, landing gear, rear, one. Bit of a tongue twister there. Okay. Name that rear gear. And so, yes, we're not going to control that with the timers. So now I gotta get the, the assemblers on and I left space like this for a reason. Um, yeah, so I had those, they're actually right there. So it's gonna be one of the, uh, an assembler, a junction, an assembler. Uh, you get the idea. Uh, MV alternating that and then putting speed upgrades on. All right, so there we go. We have uh, I have fourteen assemblers here. Uh, five, five of them are going to be set to the five. Six are going to be set to auto uh, endless craft metal grids, and then seven, eight of them are going to be doing metal plates, steel plates. So now we got to get some storage set up. Now I've been thinking about where I want to get containers. I'd like to try to keep the weight down here if I can. So I'm going to go ahead and start placing junction boxes or conveyor junctions across. Just like a grid, just to make sure everything connects, except for that one there. That didn't work out too well. Uh, this one might be an issue because I got the refinery in the way, or the reactor. Oh, and I missed. There we go. <laughs> that could have definitely solved the problem, uh, caused problems there. But basically, I want to get all these linked up to create sort of like a, a network. I want to make sure that all the assemblers can get materials as fast as they can get them. Because uh, if one assembler falls behind, that could seriously cause issues. So I'm going to do this and clean up my loose parts, get a sort of a, a network going, and I'll be I'll be right back. Okay, so I got everything hooked up now. Now I've been thinking about uh, the ore delivery, and I think the best thing I can do is. Uh, I want to put a container for the ores, but I want to have a, a conveyor sorter to actually just to make sure that the components don't go into that container because uh, you know, it's all about hopefully logistics. I don't really know how how well. I'm sorry, I'm looking for a block here. I'm looking for a sorter. Uh, yeah, like how well the logistical part of it actually does work. And yeah, I. I don't want to actually connect to, to this. Yeah, we'll just put it right here. Why not? Uh, put this one here. Yes, we're going to go this way. It's not going to be bl any black or white list. This is just for uh, storage. Or as a gate. Yeah. Sorry, it's uh, early in the morning for me. Uh, i actually recording this after yesterday. Uh, let's actually make this a proper color so I actually know which one this goes in. Well, we'll make it green. Just because. And we should have plenty of clearance. Good. So that's going to feed into the system. And now, uh, I am sort of thinking about having... Yeah, I think I better do that. I think I'm going to probably just put it right here. 
Actually, we'll keep it down low just because we can. Uh, go ahead and change that back to red. We'll do a junction there and junction here. There. I'm sorry, but I got all jittery here. It's kind of like me. I think I need more caffeine. Okay, now let's gotta think about where I'm gonna have the light, the second legs too. The second legs are gonna be about here. So let's put another container on the end here. Number seven. Yeah, number seven, not number eight. Fill that in. Okay, like so. And then the welders are gonna come right off of here. So we'll go back to some more junctions. And one, one there, one there. Wow, really jittery. Yeah. Might be due for a re reboot here, possibly. And then, now how, how high were the blocks? Uh, let's see, one, two. Okay, that's the welder there, so the welder's just come right off of here. All right, and not a problem, so we'll do that. We'll do one there. We'll go on the other side, do the same thing. Uh, I don't know, I only need one welder, but I'm going to go with two just for the sake of it. Uh, there is going to be clearance because the height that it's at right now, which is about two and a quarter blocks, is going to be the actual height it's going to be. And I actually have this on the hot bar. Yes, and there we go. And number four. One, two, three, four. They all face in the right way. They are. No, they're not. Let's turn this one around, just for symmetry purposes. Not that. I... Yeah, I will deal with you in just a moment. And you went the wrong way again. And I gotta be careful of that double click with the the tool, especially with um, builds like this. You never know when things are gonna go horribly wrong. So I'm gonna finish this up. And, uh, yeah, let me finish this up and charge up, and I'll be back for the second pair of legs. Okay, so now here's where things can get very sketchy. Because, from what I've heard, this could be resulting in a clang action. And from what I've seen with uh, the hydro finery, this might not be the smartest thing in the world to do, but I'm going to do it anyways. As uh, some, of my, some of the members of the community have said, I am... It's more or less my job to be doing stuff like this. Pushing the limits to break the game. Oh yeah, I did not want to put that there. I'm worried about block clipping too. So I'm actually not going to take that off. I'm going to place the block out one more. So it's going to be kind of derpy looking in the front. It's going to have sort of like a bull-legged walk. Maybe. That's not a piston. Like so. And I will have to name these too. So basically what it's going to be... It's going to come down. Let me let me finish these ones up. Okay, I got them finished. So what I'm going to do is uh, piston 2 and piston 3, which I just built, are going to be uh, named piston extent. Extend. It'll be extend 1. This will be extend 2. And that's just so I know which way is better or uh, which pistons I'm using okay there's nothing like throwing timing off in a build like this so then we go down with another block and was well, this gonna be enough I'm trying to think here I think I had to go up one, one more Yeah, I do actually, like that. And the reason why I have to do it like that is uh, because I'll show you as soon as I place uh, this piston here. So now what I need to do is I actually need to uh, make sure that the gears got room. So I'm gonna be placing another block here, not there. Gear block there, block there, and I can place the gear down below and that's gonna give enough room to make sure that it doesn't hit anything. And like so, is that facing the right way? I know it doesn't really matter, but just so it looks a little better. Like so. And there we go. There we go. There's the front legs. 
So I'm going to finish up the same thing on the other side, remove any misplaced blocks, and I'll get those paired up, or these pistons paired up, and get some more supplies, obviously. I want to take that out. Yes. All right, so I'll be right back. You know, it makes, me, it makes me wonder why YouTubers even say, I'll be right back, because, you know, nobody has to actually wait. It's just a matter of stopping and stopping, starting, stopping and starting recording, or in case of the big guys, you know, just pay somebody to watch, all, go through all your videos and edit out all uh, the ums and ahs and, you know, everything else. But anyway. Okay, there we go. So now it's time uh, time to actually get into the like the, the nitty gritty of it all. Uh, it's a matter of getting the timing going because these legs, are, these pistons are moving less than those pistons there. I have figured out the actual length of the blocks, and it's apparently two and a half meters from what I can tell. I just want to see what the, uh, the extent distance is. Okay, it's one meter. Okay, now it's going to make sure that all pistons can move within one second because it's going to be on a one second cycle. So up, forward, down, sort of deal, right? Alright, so this one here, unfortunately, has to go two and a half meters. So we're going to set the maximum distance to 2.5. And we're going to see how long it takes to get out there. So that's what I mean. It's going to take too long. So I'm going to have to do two and a half meters a second. Now this is where things can go horribly wrong because we might be moving things faster than they can actually, the game can actually handle, especially when it's pulling a load of, I'm going to say 800 tons. And that's going to be more once it's all filled up. So I almost might want to do this 3 meters a second, just to make sure that I can keep up. Alright, and we'll give it a quick test here. As soon as I can get close enough to that control panel. Because I want to actually see it go. And that's basically what it's going to do. So the uh, same is going to be done with the extend. Uh, the maximum distance is going to be two and a half meters. We're going to be traveling at three meters a second. And now for these gears, uh, what was the distance on this one? Or gears, pistons. Okay, pistons on this were one meter, and. So they have to travel, I want to say one and a half meters a second. I probably could go like 1.2, but you know, I don't think it's really that big of an issue. Uh, I am using heavy blocks here, so they should be able to take a little bit of abuse if need be. What I could do is have a se second set of welders in the back, repair it as it goes, if it really comes down to it. All right, and the velocity was on this was uh, 1.5, one meter distance, okay. And I just got to do the same on the front, so let me get this configured, and we'll get into the timers. Okay, so here we go. Now, this should be relatively straightforward, at least I'm hoping that's going to be. Uh, there's actually one thing I want to check. Uh, i got to go to the gear. I want to see what happens, because it's locked. Okay, I want to make sure that if I trigger a lock and it's locked, that's not going to unlock it. All right, that's good. So this will be timer block. Good, they're all numbered. So we're going to go with one second delay here. Now I have to sort of think like a full cycle on this one. So it's going to be we'll go to groups here. So if this, we're going to start with going forward. So I'm going to see here. Oh, groups, please. There we go. That's a little easier. So I want, I want the rear gear to lock and the front gear to unlock. Front gear to unlock. That is giving me unlock, right? Okay, unlock. And then, uh, the front is gonna I thought I tried using this. I'm actually gonna try using that just because so it was oh wait, hold on. Is that extract or retract? Retract. Okay. Yeah, and then we're gonna go to 
timer block two. And then timer block. Start that. Okay, then we go to timer block two, which should be this one, because this is the order I built them in. So we'll go one second on that. And the actions for this one is going to be uh, the extend is going to extend. And then you should be able to go right to timer block three from here. Uh, Yes, start timer block three, and then we go to timer block three, which for some reason is over here. I think it's because I had the cargo container there. Uh, one second delay on that. Actions for this is going to be that's going to be the the front extending. Yeah, I think that should be it. And go to timer block four. Start that. We go to timer block five. Should be somewhere around here. Where is that control panel? Uh oh, you hit it on me, did you? Of course, it's on that side. I'll have to access it from here then. Okay, so timer block. Yeah, timer block four. One second delay on that. We go here. And this is going to be the front gear are going to lock. The rear gear are going to unlock. The rear is going to. Hold on a second here. Let me figure this out. I got a little confused. Okay, I got everything all set up. I had to go through all the timer blocks to figure out what I actually had. Uh, so now I do want to put a button on here. Unfortunately, we don't have just a button. It had to be a button panel. And that's just in case I ever need to stop it, whether it's I need to adjust timing or whatever. Uh, I need to do that. And where is that button? There it is. Uh, right there. And we will just place that. Oh, I need interior plates. Okay, there we go. Everything is all set up. I do have a uh, timer set up. We've got buttons set up here. Uh, this starts the, the initial setup, and this just turns the first time block on and off just to suspend the cycle. Uh, the assemblers have been all queued up. I have them, I have them doing 200 of each endlessly or 100 of the grids and 200 of the plates and that's just to make sure that, that container doesn't fill up too much and that also makes sure that they have enough resources to keep on going. I have them turned off at the moment so I think all it's left to do is I've got this thing actually loaded up. Let's go ahead and uh, fire up the assemblers, turn those on, get them crafting, make sure they're actually doing something. Okay, that one's going. Let's check on the plates. We are good on the plates. Yeah, okay. Uh, the only thing, actually, I forgot to uh, group the welders too. Not that it matters, but you know, if I ever need to do some work up front, don't want to get hurt. Welders, save that, and I guess we will turn them on and run away. That's what I was so afraid of. Yeah, I was going to put some uh, ion thrusters on the gears to make sure that they stay connected. Just for in cases like that. Okay, let's give this a shot. Let's see what happens here. I hope I got the timing right.
really are the thrusters holding in place is that what's going on I'll just put them there to make sure that it actually locks Maybe I got too much force on them. All right, let me check some, try something. I got it. Shared inertia tensor. Did the trick. So now I'm going to let it keep going. Like I said, this isn't going to be a fast project. It's just got to work, and it's going to do it for me. Oh, I forgot to turn the welders on. And I didn't even groove them. They're too far away. What's going on here? Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. I gotta stop this. Are they not getting supplies? Is going on here? Something's not connected. Uh, actually, oh yeah, uh, I've got to turn all the assemblers on. Give me, let me, give me a minute to get some stuff produced. Okay, I'm just filling in the last blocks here. There we go. It's doing its job. It's actually a good thing that I'm going on a slow cycle because it looks like the welders might not be able to go fast enough, just being heavy blocks and all. All right, so now they are doing uh, their thing. So now let's go ahead and start it back up, and I'll charge up while we watch it climb. I'll just hop my little, little red seat here. And there it goes. It's doing its thing. So I'm going to do a quick cut here and I'll bring you back after I'm charged. Okay, I'm ready to get this thing going again. I had to actually reset it, go back to, fortunately, the earliest backup save I had, which is just enough. Uh, because with the, the shared inertia tensor off on the, the extender pistons there, it started going sideways. Or not sideways, but crooked. So let's go ahead and start this up. Uh, go turn the welders on. Uh, let's see, welders. I got the assemblers running already, so we are good to go. And we push the button. That's the wrong button. That's the button. All right, so this should work now. Oh, 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 let me uh, adjust the force on those front pistons there. Okay, we'll see how this goes. Uh, I've had to adjust the, t the tension or the, the strength on those up to 200,000. I guess my light's not doing anything. I was going to actually change the sun. Uh, but yeah, I might have to adjust the timing. It looks like it might not quite work out. But I forgot to turn those welders on again. Of course I did. But it should do the job. The way I see it, if it can make it three quarters of the way down, at least it saves me a hell of a lot of work. But this does definitely work. Let me uh, get some better light here. Yeah, right here. Okay, that's good. So there we go. Another crawler. It's going to save me some a lot of work. It's not going to save me a lot of time because it's going to take 28 hours, supposedly, to make it down there. But I do have to make sure I top it up with uh, supplies. It's got about half the iron it needs. It's going to need more nickel, and I think it's got most of the cobalt it needs. But there we go. There is the crawler. It is a self-building 
self-producing, self-building machine that is going to build my rails for me so I can build, build my elevator. And with that, I'm going to leave this one here. I'm also going to uh, blueprint this. Or I've got a blueprint that I'm going to upload to the workshop uh, once the video is up posted for you guys. Uh, but anyways, uh, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave me a like, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.